are you here for my Streamly signing? Uh, before we start, we do have a couple hiccups. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw I posted already, but not everything that needs to be signed made it to us in time, uh, unfortunately. Specifically, the newer prints, so the Honimiya, Classroom of the Elite, and things like that uh, are not with me yet. I know a couple of you are uh, VIP users, and I am so, so sorry. Uh, I will get those signed for you as soon as possible. In fact, I think, theoretically, they should be here soon. I'll let you know, and I will sign them live for you and everything, so you can all see that happen. Uh, but we will only be signing uh, some of the prints today, unfortunately. Date to be decided. Uh, date to be decided. Don't know yet. Um, but we still do have all of the uh, other gear in my shop other than the prints, so the trading cards and my one Funko Pop are still available in the shop right now and can be signed today uh, if you want that and if you want to, you know, get that in time for the holidays. I don't know when the rest is going to get here, unfortunately, and I am very, very sorry about all of that. It seems like my shipping luck is bad. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, my shop is open, and in fact, uh, we'll drop a link in the chat for anyone who uh, wants to swing by. If you did order one of the prints that I didn't get today, uh, that would be uh, either Akane from Classroom of the Elite or uh, Sawada from Horimiya, and you want to reach out and like swap it out for a different print that I do have, um, let me know and we can figure something out. I want to make sure that uh, we get all this stuff to you in time. And again, I am really, really sorry. It's a, it's a bad time to ship things, as it turns out. Uh, but hi, everybody! Um, I'm Ayu, and today I'll be doing a bit of a Q&A along with a signing. So uh, if you don't know me, I do a lot of voice acting along with other things. I play D&D, &D, I do artwork, uh, and you are welcome to ask me about any of those things. Here on this channel, usually I have a, a weekly drawing stream where I and my fellow partner in crime, Micah Solusad, play very silly drawing games with each other or sometimes you in the chat. Uh, we also have a Patreon where we run an illustrated D&D &D campaign with some of our friends, and I'll probably show you a little trailer for that later on. Uh, but I am taking your questions right now, so if you have any questions about anime, manga, voiceover, D&D, &D, all those good things, would love to talk about it. Uh, Micah is running the chat, so he will let me know when questions pop up, and I will actually get started signing my first print right now. Oh, what have you worked on? What have I worked on? Good question! Uh, I have worked on A Hat in Time, my voice Hat Kid. I'm also in Assassination Classroom as Nakamura, and I directed the dub for that. Um, other things to mention, the prints that didn't make it include things like Classroom of the Elite, which I directed the first season of, and I voice Akane. I'm also Honoko Sawada in Horimiya. Uh, let's see. I voice Victorique in Gothic. We still have prints of those available. Those made it just fine. Those made it safely. Uh, Chihiro in Shonen Maid. And, oh goodness, oh, Yuzuki in We Cross, which is a big deal because also I stream monthly booster packs where I open We Cross cards from the TCG in my attempt to build the best Yuzuki deck possible. In fact, last stream we pulled a really rare card and I'm super excited about it. Uh, there are a couple rare Yuzuki cards in the shop available if you want one of those as well. Uh, yes. I am also in Attack on Titan as the voice of Mimir Fritz. I think you can see her kind of over my shoulder. How does that? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yes, that's her. Um, and I, I voice her as well. Uh, I also am the DM for the D&D &D game Sudden Death and Sudden Life. Reborn as a level one character in a popular TTRPG and now I have to defeat the Demon Lord. And I made a mistake and did not take a breath before starting that sentence. Um, but yeah, it's an isekai D and D. It's a lot of fun, and one of the things I'm very proud of right now. So if you haven't a chance to check that out, uh, please do. Let's see, what is our first signing for today? Is Victory? Yay! All right. Chaz Brooksy says, "A Hat in Time is my favorite game." Thank you. A Hat in Time is awesome. It is super fun, and it hits all those like sort of the nostalgia notes of the collectathons for me and Hat Kid 
was an incredibly fun character to play. It was fun getting to develop her voice and come up with all the weird, silly little things she says. And I'm so happy to see Hat and Time fans in the chat. Oh, we've got our victory print. Looking good, girl. Um, so the Hat and Time print was actually drawn by uh, Jenna, who worked on a Hat in Time. But all the other prints that you're going to see here today are artwork done by myself and Micah. So I also do art, and I'm very, very proud of it. All right, what? I'm gonna put this here. All right, this number on the back. Let's make sure it gets to the people it needs to get to. All right. This is for Drew. Huge fan of Pineapple Friday Night Art Streams. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming to the Pineapple Art Streams. Uh, any comments on Cell Towers boxes? <laughs> boxes actually that would be great. Okay, okay, I can do that for you. Um, let's see. For Drew. And then let's see, what do we want? What do we want? I am going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing for the, I'm gonna swing for the bleachers, everybody. And I'm gonna draw a box live on stream. <laughs> uh, for those who aren't regulars on my weekly stream, I am exceptionally bad at drawing boxes, but that doesn't stop me from trying every week. So let's see if I can get it this time. We're gonna draw a box. I'm gonna use gold so it really stands out. Okay, check it out, okay, check it out. I think, I think we've got something. We've got some, oh, yeah, good enough. Good, good, good enough. That good. That's a three-dimensional object. A, yeah, um, it's not. That is. It's not quite, I'm, um, I, but not important. <laughs> I came really close though, and that's what matters. <laughs> um yeah it, again I, I feel like i get closer every week so uh you know what uh speaking of drew drew says no notes wow here i'm gonna even write box on the side so we know what is happening <laughs> uh drew also asks do you have a particular anime that you feel really strongly about or were moved by Ooh, that's a great question. Particularly that I feel strongly about or moved by. Uh, well, I am definitely fond of Assassination Classroom for a lot of reasons. Um, first, it is the first anime I ever directed. It's not the first project I ever directed, uh, but it is the first anime that I ever got to direct. And as soon as I found out that I was working on it, I was like, oh, you know, I had read some of the manga, but I went and found everything I possibly could and by the time it was over I was like I love this story and I love these characters and I love this show so much that it just even even if I wasn't working on it I would be such a fan and the fact that I did get to work on it and then I got to work with the people that I got to work on with it um is very meaningful I think one of my favorite scenes and this is a little bit of a spoiler so if you haven't seen assassination classroom yet cover your ears for like 10 seconds um one of my favorite scenes comes in the second season when uh nagisa and karma have their first really big fight with each other and in that moment i i knew that i, I that was an important thing for the characters and i wanted that to shine and i was like we're gonna spend whatever time it takes to get this scene Right. And then Lindsay Seidel, who plays Nagisa, and Austin Tyndall, who plays Karma, uh, came in and I was explaining how important it was and how we were going to really dedicate some stuff to the scene. And they both, you know, they knew that it mattered. And each of them nailed it in one take. <laughs> yeah. um, they were just so, so good. You know, I was like, oh, we're going to have to really dig in there and fix the details and fit. And no, no, they nailed it. They're just that good. Uh, they, they watched the scene, we talked about it, we talked about what needed to happen, and then they just did it. And it was beautiful, that moment when things clicked together. Because when you record, you don't record together necessarily. It's one person at a time. So the first person who comes to record, they're just recording into empty space. And as you have other people, there are blank, empty spaces between where characters should be talking and aren't. 
And in that moment where both actors are in a scene and suddenly you can hear them talking to each other and it sounds like they're responding back and forth having a real dialogue is magic. It's, there's just a moment where you just breathe in. It's like, it's real. It, it happened and it's, it's so good to watch and seeing how both of them made that scene so real and clicked into their characters so immediately felt incredibly good and you know as a director i want to be like i'm so proud of the work i did on that scene but if i'm gonna be really really honest it's because they're good actors um and so i'm really really proud of them i'm really proud of how that scene turned out it is so good it felt like magic when we we're working on it and i hope it was really meaningful to everybody who watched it because it is still one of my favorites even after all these years so thank you for your question all right that's our victory print do -do -do, do -do -do. heck yeah all right There's one there. all right we have another question from the chat another Gray question fantasy yes asks how is it doing voice direction compared to voice acting Ooh. and what does that usually entail interesting voice acting versus voice directing depends on the project um, with anime, the animation's already done. So oftentimes you have people in one at a time and you just sort of click them into the character and the scene and let it roll from there uh, when you're directing. Uh, I worked on a couple of video games as well and usually that's a little bit looser. Uh, video games especially because oftentimes there are alternate scenes and endings based on the choices the character makes You're not always recording everything in chronological order So as the director, it's your job to keep all of those things in your mind and to remember things like oh no, 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 no I know that you and this other character are friends But actually this new scene the player made different choices and now you're enemies and you've got to read it completely differently mm -hmm. And you have to know all of those, you know, it's You've got all these graphs and spreadsheets and, you know, little decision trees in your head that you have to keep track of. And it's a really different process. Whereas uh, when you're a voice actor, your job is to make your one character come alive. And you don't really have to worry about the rest because the director, theoretically, handles that for you. So, yeah, you do want to know, am I enemies or my friends with this character in this moment? But the director will catch you on that and give you all that context. And so your most important goal is just to understand the character, to, to be, to, to inhabit them and, and, and bring that to it. So there's a lot less to think about when you're acting and you can really focus on your one character, which is nice. Uh, the cool thing about being a director, though, is that you get to see all the pieces come together at once. Um, like I was talking about earlier, when you have finally have everyone in a scene and they're talking to each other, it just feels good. It's that satisfying moment, like when you're putting together a puzzle and you just click that last piece in and the picture is complete, and it feels really, really good uh, in a way that as an actor you can't really get until the final product is out and on streaming or Blu-ray and then you can sit down and watch it, but you don't get that moment. You just have to go in there and trust that the director and the engineer and all the other actors are putting their pieces where they belong and you're putting your piece where it belongs. And that's just, you know, how you're gonna do it. Um, so yeah, they are, they are different in a lot of ways. I think, I think most people would say acting is more fun partially because you do have a lot less to worry about you don't have to track all of those things um but i i do enjoy both of them i i'm happy that i get to do both they're both things that i really really love and that spark uh creativity and joy in me uh, that is a good question though so thank you all right let's see who do we have next to sign Ooh, heck it, awesome. All right, I got a hat kid print. Jenna drew this, it's so good and I love it. Oof. Gotta remember to put the thing on the back first so we know who this is. You, you mentioned that's the... Um... Yeah, uh, Jenna, who did the original character art for A Hat in Time, drew this print for me specifically. Um, it is an original piece by her. It is not part of the original Hat in Time game. Uh, so you can only get it here, 
Uh, and as a little joke, uh, she put a little fish. A little fish right there. Um, and I love it. Oh yeah, every time I draw a picture of myself, I always put a fish on my head. I don't know why. You're welcome to ask, and I'll tell you I don't know why. I've been doing it for a while, and uh, Jenna has referenced that with this hat kid print. Let's see. All right, this is two chaz. Could you write picnic? Ooh, we're saying bad words. Oh, oh we're going to get banned on Twitch for saying bad words. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, here, I'll make it. I'll really make him a strong, strong word. There we go. It's a, it's my, it's a new font that I've invented called Strong Word. Go. I've got All another right. question in the chat uh -huh. uh, by Destron Decepticon 23 yeah. Speaking of Hat Kid, what is it like voicing a character whose dialogue is mostly efforts and reactions? Ooh, um, good question, good question. Uh, what is it like voicing someone whose dialogue is mostly reactions and efforts? Uh, fun, first off. Um, the reactions and efforts are oftentimes my favorite part. Uh, I know not everyone enjoys them, but I think they're fun to do. <laughs> um, and and when we did it, because it is largely lots of little noises, like little hip, 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 uh, within the game, we actually did record a ton of them. Uh, there, there, are, there are so many because they didn't want it to be repetitive within the game. And coming up with like new ways to make a sound that sounds like she's jumping without getting extremely weird. You know the. Hey, hey. Uh, there are a couple that I were I like I made too weird of a noise and we couldn't use it. It's like Bleh. it's like well okay that's not jumping that's maybe it's hitting a wall hard to say. <laughs> um, and, and I think I, I do like just making those really silly noises. So that that was fun. Uh, but also, I don't know, I know it can't just be me, but like growing up when you played around like, you know, fake sword fighting or whatever, I always did the little noises too as a kid. You're like, ooh, yeah, 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 pa, 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 ha. And so it felt very much like just getting to go back into that space and make silly noises like I did as a kid. Um, please tell me, chat. You've done that too, right? Right? We all made silly noises as kids. <laughs> oh, 100%. Excellent. Excellent. Um, very, very Legend of Zelda esque. Yeah. Very Link. It's just, it's fun. And I think getting to put in like little words here and there, like, a, oh no, oh, ow, uh, was also a lot of fun because that also sort of shakes things up here and there. Um, but that's always been my favorite part. I think there is, there's a very specific scene in Hoodie Mia where Sawada has this big reaction and I was like, oh, this is so good. I'm so excited. And so when it came, I was just, I made this like a noise and it was silent after I recorded it. And I was like, I don't know. Um, and I'm still recording remotely, so I can't see the director uh, when we do this. I can only just hear, hear him through my headphones. Uh, and it was Sean Gann who was directing me at the time. And after a very long pause, I finally hear him. And he was like, sorry, I was muted because I was laughing so hard. I didn't want to be in your ear. And he was completely out of breath like that. We're keeping that. That's the one. We're doing it. And I was like, yay. Yeah. But it's like that moment where you're like, guys, are you okay? I can't see you. What's happening? Is everything okay? I just thought it would be fine. Um, but yeah, they're my favorite part. And uh, thank you for listening to the silly noises I make. Uh, 
how is it voicing hat kit for the Nyazuka? Nyakuza, sorry. Nyakuza. Oh. DLC. Nyakuza was so much fun. Um, cat crimes. I loved it. Uh, for, for a lot of reasons. One, I did it much later. So at the start, when we recorded all this stuff for Hat in Time, it was still like in its Kickstarter phase. We had no idea if it was going anywhere. And we were just kind of hoping that someone would play this game uh, with really no idea if anybody would. And so it was just like, let's mess around. Let's create a fun character and see what happens. Uh, by the time we got around to the uh, Nyakuza uh, expansion or DLC, it was like, oh, people are playing this game and they're enjoying it. And they like all the goofy, silly things we did. So let's do more of those. And so getting to come back for a character knowing now instead of being like, I don't even know if anyone's ever going to hear this and being like, oh, I can't wait to share this with everybody was was a really different place to come in. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and then they showed me the designs. And as much as I love her hat, as you can see, I'm also a hat person. Um, the Nyakuta design with the cat ears and the mask is so good. <laughs> And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, oh, oh no, I love it. This is good. This is a good design. Um, if they ever make that jacket, I am so there for it. Like, uh, um, but yeah, so it was fun. It felt really good. It felt like coming back to an old friend and being like, people actually love you. They really do. And I'm so happy to be able to do more. Let's see. Oh, Mark. All right. Um, okay. Brian, theoretically, you're up next with a Honoka Sawada print from Horimiya. Um, if you missed the announcement earlier, we've had a shipping error and the Sawada prints have not arrived. Um, I will get them as soon as possible and I will sign them live on stream as soon as I get them and I'll announce when that new stream is going to be. So if you're willing to wait, I'll get to that as soon as possible. If you want to swap it in for a print that I do have, uh, and if you're in the chat, you can let me know. Uh, but for now, I will move on and, uh, oh hey, same message to Daryl who has an Akane Tachibana print from Classroom of the Elite. Those also did not make it in time which is a shame because that's one of the ones I'm really proud of. I really like the coloring that I did on that piece in particular. Um, so I'm sorry I don't get to show it off this stream. Uh, but I have not forgotten either of you. I am not trying to skip over you. Uh, unfortunately, shipping is what it is. Um, so I am, once again, very, very sorry about that. But I will get to it and I will do it live for you. Right. Ooh, another hat kid though. Very exciting. Let's see. Uh, chat is confirming that uh, stupid sounds were had as yes. kids. Hey, yes! Awesome. Uh, also, Daryl says it's all good, no worries. Don't mind waiting at all for them. Thanks for the heads up. Cool, cool. I will let everybody know when the new signing is as soon as I get those prints. But this one is for Aaron. Uh, uh, hat. Kid. There we go. No special instructions, no notes. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. Ta -da. All right. Another hat kid. Awesome. Ooh, there she be. There we go. Uh, are there any types of roles that you would like to try uh, in the future? 
Mm. Something that takes you out of your comfort zone. Oh, that's interesting. Any types of roles to try in the future? Well, let's see. I don't voice a lot of adults, that's for sure. Um, and I don't think I'd be very good at it. Uh, I know that as an actor, you're supposed to be like, I'm willing to try anything and I'll do anything, but I will say very honestly um, that I don't feel like I'm ready to voice a very adult-like character yet. That being said, it is something I'm working on and something that I would love to try in the future. Um, and I don't really feel bad saying this because I also think that when you're an actor, it's important to know exactly what you sound like and how, you know, what you're trying out for because if you don't recognize your own sound, it's kind of a bad thing. Uh, so I'm very comfortable saying I'm not ready for it yet, uh, but that doesn't mean I don't want to try. That doesn't mean I'm not working on it and trying to become ready for it. Uh, so adult characters would be awesome. <laughs> Especially like... Uh, you know, like the warrior types, like the really big ones with swords and stuff, or, you know, fantasy archers, things like that, like the really tough kind. Um, I would love to give those a go. Um, other, other things that I would like to try that I haven't yet, I've never voiced a magical girl, and I want to. Um... And it's a, uh, that's kind of one of those things that I always sort of leap at the chance to try, but Magical Girl anime doesn't get quite as much attention uh, in this hemisphere as it does in the other, so it's kind of like there are fewer chances to try something like that, but I definitely want to try. Um, let's see, what was the rest of the question? Any... Uh, anything that will take you out of your comfort zone. Anything to take me out of my comfort zone. Oh, um, also, if we're talking about outside of my comfort zone... Oh boy, I don't do a whole lot of accent work. <laughs> uh, and I would like to be better at that. And I'm working very hard at being better at that. But it is definitely, at the moment, outside of my comfort zone. And it is something that I would like to try for. So, thank you for that question. Ooh, that was, that made me think about some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, adults and accents. Adults with accents? Who knows? Um, but those are definitely things that I'm working towards adding to my repertoire. Alright. We've got... Oh, let's get down this. <clears throat> let's see. Make it on to America. Oh, um, yeah. Write a birthday message from Hackid to my friend Raven. Okay. Uh, Monica, if you're in the chat, it looks like your instructions are to write it out, make it out to your friend. Uh, if you're there, can you confirm that it is for your friend and I shouldn't put your name on it? I, I think I will do that, but I just want to make sure if you're here watching, that is what needs to happen with this thing. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right. Let's see. Happy birthday. Hat, hat, hattie birthday? Hattie birthday? Should I say that? That's not a thing, is it? That's definitely not a thing. <laughs> Happy birthday, Raven. Uh, let's see. A uh, quick question from the chat. Sure. Here, I'm drawing a hat, but it's also a birthday cake with candles, you see. I hope that is clear. <laughs> it's a hat cake. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hat kid. Uh, did you voice Hat Adult in the Time Alpha version? Did I? Yes! I did voice Hat Adult. She's a young adult. Um, <laughs> but I did voice Hat Adult, which was a lot of fun trying to figure out like who and where she would be when she ages up. Um, I also got to, I didn't mention this in the earlier question, uh, but I would also love to sing more for uh, projects. It's one of my favorite 
things like in anime I love dubbing songs but like outside of anime I also think that including songs is a lot of fun and those opportunities don't arise that often and if I'm gonna be really frank I think there are a lot of people in this industry co-workers and colleagues who I look up to who are brilliant incredible singers and you know it's it would be a dream to be able to sing alongside them and so that is definitely one of the things I want to do but Hat Adult did get to sing a little bit. Um, I assume some of the stuff from the Alpha has made it, has snuck out into the public eye at this point in time. So yes, I was voicing Hat Adult as well, and uh, that is me doing the song. Uh, in the Alpha version, it was super fun, and I love her design, and I'm sorry we didn't get to do more with it, but it was fun that we did get to do stuff with it. All right. Got more hat kid. All right, we got one more question. Cool, cool. Uh, for both of us, uh, favorite cuisines. Ooh. Color and dessert. Favorite cuisines, cause you. Oh man, you ask difficult questions. Um, dang. You know, anytime people ask me like, "What's your favorite, whatever, music, cuisine, anything?" I'm like, "Good," which is a total cheating answer, and I know it is. Um, but I like a lot of things. I have really eclectic tastes, and genuinely, I'll go for most things as long as they're done well. But I would say the sort of cuisine I go back to over and over, like my, my, my comfort cuisine, the thing that makes me feel like when I'm having a bad day and I just whew, need to eat something that will make me feel better. Uh, Japanese food will do that for me. Absolutely. Uh, a nice bowl of ramen, a little bit of sushi, a bento. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. That, oh, just a little bento box. Feels so good. <laughs> um, Indian food will do that for me too. Um, love a curry. Love a curry from yeah, Japanese curry as well. Any curry, in fact. You know what? Let's extend it. Any curry. I am here for it. Um, and I think, like, those are my big go to's, but genuinely, I love so much food and if there's a food that i don't love or a cuisine i don't love i think it's just because i haven't had enough to know it well enough yet i've not really met a cuisine i don't like let's see um how about you cuisines uh i love japanese food and i love korean food mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. banchan's great oh banchan okay barbecue mm -hmm. oh a hot pot oh oh yeah, oh. we went to uh, <laughs> South Korea in 2019 mm -hmm. and ate so much good food. It was so good. Oh, it was excellent. Just, I remember being in, there's a little stall that sells like just sweets. And there's a line that was so, so, so long. And I saw that long line and went, I don't know what's at the other end of this line, but I know I'm going to like it. <laughs> and I got to the other end. It was a dumpling filled with nuts and seeds and brown sugar and it was so good it was griddled it was griddled and like oh it was so good mm. it was excellent what about color um color 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 well um i like blue I was about to say, as you can see, I like blue, but I realize I'm not wearing any of my blue dresses today. Very brown. <laughs> it's very brown. I'm, I'm doing the mushroom look today. Mushroom foraging vibes. Uh, love all kinds of blue. Um, but I also do like earthy tones, so like browns and stuff like that. If you've seen me live on stream a lot, you know that I wear a lot of Lolita fashion. And most of my Lolita fashion is either blue or some sort of brown earthy color. And those are those are my picks, usually. Um, I also like purple a lot. I don't wear a lot of purple, but I like purple in things. I'll put purple in a lot of my art or embellishments or things like that. Um, I like things that are purple. I don't wear so much of it. What's your favorite color? 
if anyone watches Bob Ross, I love me some Pathalo Blue. Pathalo Blue! I love Pathalo Blue! I love all the blues, but that's a good blue. There's a P in front of it, right? I think so. Phthalo? Phthalo? Yeah. yeah. Phthalo. Phthalo blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, don't ever say you didn't learn anything on our stream. We're very educational. We teach colors. <laughs> there has to be a huge asterisk about learning things on our stream. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but listen, gang. Listen, gang. If you were at my last um, unboxing stream and you saw me desperately trying to learn um, like C6H2, the card that I kept pulling and I, was, I screamed ethane every time so I would remember it. Literally the next day I was doing a puzzle and the clue was uh, a gas made of carbon and hydrogen and I was like, is it ethane? And it was. So all I'm saying is that if you watched that stream, you would have been able to solve that puzzle too. We're learning things together. This is a very educational show. Like, you, I just, I'm just saying. I'm By just educational, saying. educational, what we really mean is that we have a lot of questions and then I just Google the answer. And then we all learn together. <laughs> you learn so much on this stream. We learn about ethane and the molecular makeup of it. And also pictures of anime girls at the same time. <laughs> All good. All good things. All good things. Um, I've got another hat kid to sign. Uh, there are no special instructions for this one. So, okay. Good. To whomever you are, here's your hat kid. Because I was going to say, you forgot to answer what your favorite dessert is. <laughs> I forgot to answer what my favorite dessert is. I'll be right back. Hang on. Hat kid. There we go. There we go. Okay, what's my favorite dessert? Crap. That's a good question. Um, oh! I was like, I hope it's not crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I saying? It's flan. There you go. It's flan. It's, it's pudding. pudding. Um, I don't know if you, like, I was gonna say, I don't know if you guys watch anime or not. Um, I'm assuming several of you watch anime, and you've probably seen pudding, oftentimes uh, translated as pudding. It's... It's basically a flan. It's a little custard flan with like a caramel top and you can usually find them in the little plastic tubs. And I love those. Those are my favorite thing. That is the reason that my username is Soy Milk Pudding because it's a reference to pudding. So that is my favorite dessert to eat. Um, my favorite dessert to make is cookies though. I like to make chocolate chip cookies. I think I'm pretty good at it. You are very good at it. <laughs> you are very good at it. I have dedicated years of my life to tweaking my own personal recipe and I feel like it gets better every time. Um, Can confirm. <laughs> the latest addition has been just a, a hint, a little sprinkling, just barely there, of a little espresso powder to add some depth to it. And I really like how they turned out, so. It's like a mocha chocolate chip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's my favorite dessert to make, but my favorite one to eat is pudding. How about you? I like tiramisu. Ooh, that's a good choice. Very tasty. That's a very good choice. That's not my username. <clears throat> it's not. My username is my name. Yeah, that's way easier to remember. Um, Flying milk pudding is way more difficult to remember. But easier to spell, I think. All right. Is that my name? Then my name, yeah. It's easier to spell than my name, for sure. Like, I don't even know how to spell my name. Uh, Mark complete. Do you want to get started on the next one, or do you want to answer a question? Uh, let's have a question. Let's have a question. Uh, notice that few anime that are dubbed, uh, the songs tend to be left in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason for that? Ooh, interesting question. Um, so, yeah, uh, some anime have songs in them. Sometimes we dub the songs, sometimes we don't. And the reason for that is many. <laughs> there are so many reasons for it. Um, sometimes there's just not enough time. Um, some dubs are on extremely tight schedules, especially these days. Um, dubs tend to be on incredibly tight turnaround schedules, and it just takes more time to dub a song. 
um, than it does not to. And so oftentimes there just isn't time. Um, sometimes it's not possible. And you'll see this, especially with older anime, people will talk about lost materials, um, where like there's just stuff that doesn't exist anymore. And in some cases, like an instrumental track with no vocals on it might not exist anymore. It might just not be anywhere that anyone has access to. It could just not be there. So it could just be utterly impossible. Um, and there are uh, a lot of other reasons based on all sorts of like contracts and things that people have to sign and, and who's doing the singing and legal stuff as well. Um, Copyright. Yeah. Um, who owns the rights to the song because oftentimes the songwriter has something to do with it and it's the not label. necessarily yeah the label or the singer or something like that um, just so many reasons there's never going to be one exact reason why it doesn't happen I do know that when I'm directing I try to make it happen as often as possible it doesn't always land but I certainly try um, but yeah sometimes it's just it cannot be done for one reason or another and uh You'll never know which one it is. There are so many different options. Uh, that is a very good question. Uh, and the answer, unfortunately, is many. Let's see. Got another hat, kid. All right, this one is for, all right, two. I'd say great choices all around. Love Indian food. Japanese food is good too. Never had Korean. Oh. Spicy. It is spicy. Um, for those of you who have had Korean, what do you recommend as a good starting point? Mm. Um, you know, I think... Um, you know, bibimbap is a pretty good place to start. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Plus, if you get in a hot stone bowl, that's always just, like, fun. Um, if you like meat, K-barbecue. Yeah, K-barbecue is so good. Oh, it's so good. I'm thinking about it now. I'm like... Mm -hmm. A lot of different choices <laughs> of meat with different types of seasonings. Mm -hmm. uh, you also get different sides. Yeah. Which is nice. And it's usually all you can eat, so... Yeah, it's good stuff. You get to try out all sorts of things. Small portions, lots of it. Mm -hmm. uh, K-Barbecue, uh, usually when you go into the place, uh, it's it's kind of an experience as well because oftentimes there'll be a grill on the table and what they do is they bring you the meat you order and you cook it on the grill yourself. Go with friends. Go with friends. It's a friend event. There mm -hmm. should be several of you. You should be enjoying it as a group. Um, also, good yeah. if one person is already experienced with it, so yes. they can help out. They can tell you what to order and help out and show you how to use the grill and stuff. Mm -hmm. It is so much fun. You know, K-Barbecue is definitely one of those, like, you know, birthday, graduation, celebration type meals that you really want to try. Yeah. Uh, very much recommend that. Good Friday, Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. out times. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely recommend that. Um, Korean food's good. Um, Korean bakeries are also excellent. Yes. Um, so good. Uh, if you can ever get your hands on some milk bread, make a sandwich with milk bread. Not even a sandwich. Just, just eat a like, Yeah. I don't know, whipped cream or peanut butter. Oh, yeah, you'll never honey. want normal sliced bread again. Yeah. Oh, so oh it's so good. Uh, you can also make milk bread if you want to, but it's a process. It's a process. I never regret doing it, but it always takes a really long time. All right, that is for uh, How is the mushroom growing in hydroponics going? Ooh, all right. Well, since I'm wearing my mushroom outfit, ta-da. Um, hydroponics are going great. Uh, for people who don't know, I do have my own garden. I grow vegetables and fruits myself, strawberries, tomatoes, and lettuce. And uh, right now the tomatoes are doing pretty well, but I'm going to have to probably reset them pretty soon and start a new batch because I grow all of these things indoor in a hydroponics garden. There's a size limit. 
and once you hit it you kind of just have to start over again um mushrooms i finished my latest flush and we're not doing any more at the moment because the weather is simply not right for it too uh, cold. it's yeah it's too cold for mushrooms at the moment um but the last flush we had was lion's mane i believe and they were very good oh oyster. no no Oys oyster is pink oyster mushroom yellow oyster golden, golden oyster golden oyster mushrooms i don't remember all my mushrooms <laughs> i'm wearing my mushroom outfit and i don't remember all my mushrooms um it was golden oyster mushrooms and they were tasty they were they were actually really tasty now that i'm remembering them they were really good Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to see pictures of uh, our harvests from our gardens, yes. uh, join our Patreon. Yes, uh, good point. We actually do post a lot of our food that we make. Baked goods, noodles, stuff from our garden, mushrooms that we grow, all of those uh, are on our Patreon. So if you like our artwork, you can see that on our Patreon. If you want to vote on what we draw next, you can see that on our Patreon. And if you're interested in our D&D series where we play with a bunch of friends and record the whole thing, that is also on our Patreon. All right. Um, that is the last of the signings we have for today of all the things that made it. Um, the a couple of questions yes. left. Yes, awesome. Uh, the store is still open if anyone wants to grab anything. Um, but we've, we still got one Funko Pop left, a couple cards, and um, all of the old, like, uh, Victor Reek and Nakamoto and stuff, all of them have prints that made it. The newer prints are on their way, and as soon as they get here, we'll schedule a new signing. Uh, but we've got some questions, so let's finish this Q&A. We'll go up to about three. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Uh, how did the name Hello Pineapple come about? <laughs> um, so we are technically Pineapple Studio because we are an art studio. It's just two of us. We're a small studio, uh, but we are. And how uh, did we come up with that name? I, uh, I'm from Hawaii. Mm. There are a lot of pineapples there. It's true. We also got a lot of imports from Japan, and so there was a uh, candy mm -hmm. on the store, uh, on the shelves at a store I went to, um, that was imported from Japan. And in Japanese, the sounds A and I together yeah, make pine. the sound I. Pineapple. Yeah. Yep. But <laughs> to an English reader, it looks like pain. Pineapple. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and so that's how I got that name, uh, and I just started tacking hello on the front because I thought it would make a good username, and that's how we got to Hello Pineapple, <laughs> because I come up with weird usernames, um, but we are technically Pineapple Studio because we're a studio that makes art, like all the art that you saw here today, among others. In fact. You know, I'm just going to take the time to show off some of our art anyway, since we're here. Because I am exceptionally proud of it! So, we've got this, my new Nakamura print. I don't think I had this on the last signing I did. Oh, no, I did. But yeah, this one's my new one, and I can, love her. Can you hit focus? Oh, focus. Let's not be blurry. There we go! There we go. I'm really fond of that one. I'm very proud of it. Uh, all of these prints are... Uh, things that you can vote on yes. on our Patreon. So every single one of these is thanks to our patrons. We have a monthly vote as to what we should draw next. And our patrons have selected what winds up in our print stores. So thank you very much to patrons. Thank um, you, patrons. Thank you, patrons. Um, let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, look at this. I'm very proud of hey, this you one. Should, you should mention what show that's from. Oh, this is Chihiro from Shonen Maid, which is another show that I really, really love and is very touching. And if you look in the top corner here, I put a pudding in this print. So there you go. That's a secret. Don't tell anyone. That's just, that's just for everyone in chat to know as I snuck a pudding into this. See? You see it? Yep, there it is, there it is, that little pudding right there. <laughs> Secret. Secret pudding. Did you draw that one? No, no, I mean, you put it in there, but like... <laughs> for context, Micah draws everything and then I color it. Uh, is, is the division of labor at Pineapple Studio. Couldn't remember 
remember. Uh, but I think I did ask you to draw a pudding in particular because I thought it would be cute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and here actually is a preview for later, everybody. That's all, Chris. Hey. Um, you have a signing later this week, right? Yeah, on Saturday. On Saturday, 16th. next Saturday, Mike is doing a signing. I am. And there's going to be some really, tr I'm really proud of how this one came out. It took a long time to color it, like a really long time. I have to draw that before <laughs> the game drop. And so I had to figure out what his outfits were based on trailers alone. It was awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very difficult and it took a long time to color it. But I'm really proud of how it turned out. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm I also... voiced that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He voiced that one, too. Um, I'm also really proud of how the coloring on this one turned out. Oh, I love it. It's so good. I love all of our noragami pieces. Yeah. Um, and then this one also was really good. Showing off all of our artwork now. Long live I'm... Tales of Luminaria. Long live Tales of Luminaria. And this one's a personal favorite of mine because I also directed the dub of The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm proud of that dub. I think, I think it's very funny. The original show, first off, is very funny. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm really, really proud of how the dub turned out. And so anything about Psyche K just makes me go, it's Psyche and I love it. I love it so much. That was a that was a fun show to work on. A lot of, <laughs> lot of good goofballs on that show. Mm -hmm. uh, fun fact about that is that the, um, when I was directing Assassination Classroom, there was an episode where they open up a ramen shop and a bunch of random characters from other manga show up, just like little cameos, and Psyche is one of them. And I remember seeing that and being like, oh, that's that other manga. I should probably check it out sometime, but I mean, I don't know when I will. Uh, as it turns out, the answer is immediately afterwards, because the next show I directed was The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. And it's like, oh, it's that guy. I was going to check out his show, and now I am. Very those, cool. Those two manga are friends, apparently. Yes, there actually is a crossover chapter of the manga of Koro Sensei versus Psyche, which in my heart I know will not happen, but I wish became an anime so we could dub it. <laughs> um, it yeah, it's very good. They're they're it's the two of them are fighting over sweets. Like they want the last bean bun, I think. And that just I vibe with that. <laughs> I totally understand that. So, uh, yeah, Psyche versus Koro Sensei. Who would win? <gasps> Who could say? If only we animated it so we could find out and then we dubbed that. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. That's Speaking a good plan. We should do of that. Anime adaptations. Mm -hmm. uh, for both of us, this is from Symphonic Sins. Sure. For both of us, if we could pick a manga that uh, we've read to get an anime adaptation. That doesn't Ooh. have one currently. Ooh. Which would I, which would we choose? Dang, it's tough because my top three answers just got anime announced very recently. That's true. Um, what are they? So I have to pick. Um, uh, 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 so I love Time for Torture Princess, uh, and if you've read it, you know why. Because once again, it's a food series. I know the title doesn't sound like it's a food series. It is a food series. Um. I've also really enjoyed uh, Detective Ron Kamonohashi, who uh, they announced they announced the anime like a while ago, but we've been getting drops of like key images, key images and, and cast announcements more recently. And then I think the one that just got announced, um, oh crap, I forgot what it was called. I just I just know what the little thing looks like every time I read it every week. But it's about magical girls, um, so of course I love it. And I just got. Their anime announced too, so I'm very, very happy for them. Oh, and then of course, um, Blue Box, which I love, uh, also got an anime announced. So, you know, all the good stuff is getting announced. If I were to pick, I think Kill Blue is pretty funny, and I think that will get an anime sooner rather than later. Um, it's running in Shonen Jump, and the manga call, I believe, is the one who did Kuroko's Basketball. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, Hoping that was a really, it's a very funny one. Um, what else? What else am I reading? I'm reading so much manga. 
Um, hmm. But that one in particular, I've been enjoying quite a bit. And, uh... Oh, um... This might be a weird one because I think the manga is actually either wrapped up or going to wrap up within one or two chapters. Um, but even if you slit my mouth wound up being a really cute supernatural rom-com. And I would love to see that get animated at some point in time. Um, it's, uh, it's about Chisake Onna, the, uh, uh, the lady who asks, am I pretty? When she has the mask on. Uh, and... It's a rom-com for some reason, and it's wound up being way cuter than I expected it to be. So, big fan of that. Uh, I would also really love to see anything by Arina Tanemura that hasn't been animated turned into an anime, because I it love her animated, art. Want new ones. Yeah, yeah, um, I would like that a lot. <laughs> How about you? What do you think? You get an anime. Ooh! It's never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. But boy, I want it, it would sometimes. Be nice. It would definitely be nice. Uh, also, never gonna happen because it's way too detailed, but um, uh, A Bride Story. Oh, yeah. Kaoru Mori's A Bride Story is one of the most beautiful mangas I've ever seen. The amount mm -hmm. of detail and ink work is so good. It's but so pretty. It's it's too detailed. I get the feeling any anime of it would not do it justice. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, so those, I think, at least off the top of my head, I'm sure there's more. Like, nearly any time I read an an uh, any manga, I'm like, ooh, but what if this were also animated? Wouldn't that be nice? Um, and a lot of the things that I do like are getting animated already, so I'm happy for them. Uh, for years, my answer was Delicious in Dungeon. But I think that's getting an anime now. It is. So. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Spy Family too. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be Spy Family, and then now it isn't. So it's really cool that the thing that I said got made. I'm pretty sure it's because the industry is listening to these streams. It just means we're ahead of the curve. <laughs> we have such good taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have any other questions? Let's see. Um. um Uh, you guys do a stellar job. Oh, thank you. With composition and coloring. Shout out for Nor Noragami Season 3. Hey, that counts. What? Yeah, I want Noragami Season 3. There it is. That's the thing <laughs> I want. That counts. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for hanging out while I sign some stuff, everybody. Again, sorry to the people who uh, your stuff didn't arrive. I will let you know as soon as possible once we can get that signed. Thank you, everybody, uh, for all of your questions. Um, I will end here, but I did mention that I run a D&D &D campaign with a couple of friends. So I will actually end on showing you a trailer for it, along with links where you can watch it, it is on our Patreon. Um, if you can't afford to back us right now, I totally get it, but uh, do make sure you're following because we do intend to release it to everybody eventually. So make sure you are watching us in all of those spaces. Once again, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you being here, and we shall see you next time. Get my phone out. Tinker with the app. Uh, three, two, one. Cheese! Cheese! As you count down, Tony, you're holding the phone up in front. All of you can hear a rumbling sound of an engine that's growing louder. And just as you snap the picture, a truck speeds your way and smashes into you, killing all four of you instantly. Hello, heroes. I am Marshmallow Fandango, and I'm the one who summoned you here. And you are? The only time I've ever been in a room alone is when they say, Bad Cat, and they pick me up by the neck and they say, You go in there. I don't know why something came over me and I just had to say, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. Well, perhaps it would help to know that I am the chosen one. So where we're from, we have a delicacy that's known as pizza. Piece of what? 